Ando 29A, Chief Joseph's Lincoln Hall speech. My friends, I have been asked to show you my heart. I am glad to have a chance to do so. I want the white people to understand my people. Some of you think an Indian is like a wild animal. This is a great mistake. I will tell you all about our people, and then you can judge whether an Indian is a man or not. I believe much trouble and blood would be saved if we opened our hearts more. I will tell you in my way how the Indian sees things. The white man has more words to tell you how they look to him, but it does not require many words to speak the truth. What I have to say will come from my heart, and I will speak with a straight tongue. Akum kin ama mihat. The great spirit is looking at me and will hear me. Our fathers gave us many laws, which, we, which they had learned from their fathers. These were good. They told us to treat all men as they treated us, that we should never be the first to break a bargain, that it was a disgrace to tell a lie, that we should speak only the truth, that it was a shame for one man to take from another his wife or his property without paying for it. We were taught to believe that the great spirit sees and hears everything and that he never forgets that hereafter he will give every man a spirit home according to his deserts. If he has been a good man, he will have a good home. If he has been a bad man, he will have a bad home. This I believe and all my people believe the same. At last, I was granted permission to come to Washington and bring my friend Yellow Bull and our interpreter with me. I'm glad we came. I've shaken hands with a great many friends, but there are some I want to know, which there, but there are some things I want to know which no one seems able to explain. I cannot understand how the government sends a man out to fight with us, as it did General Miles, and then breaks his word. Such a government has something wrong with it. I cannot understand why so many chiefs are allowed to talk so many different ways and promise so many different things. I've seen the great father chief, the next great chief, the commissioner chief, the law chief, and many other chiefs, and they all say they are my friends and that I shall have justice. But while all their mouths talk right, I do not understand why nothing is done for my people. I have heard talk and talk, but nothing is done. Good words do not last long unless they amount to something. Words do not pay for my dead people. They do not pay for my country not overrun by white men. They do not protect my father's grave. They do not pay for my horses and cattle. Good words do not give me back my children. Good words will not make good the promise of your war chief, General Miles. Good words will not give my people a home where they can live in peace and take care of themselves. I am tired of talk that comes to nothing. It makes my heart sick when I remember all the good words and all the broken promises. There has been too much talking by men had, who had no right talk. Too many misrepresentations have been made. Too many misunderstandings have come up between the white men and the Indians. The white men, the white man wants to live in peace while the Indian can live in peace. There will be no trouble. Treat all men alike. Give them all the same law. Give them an even chance to live and grow. All the men were made by the same great spirit chief. They are all brothers. The earth is the mother of all people and all peoples should have equal rights upon it. You might as well expect the rivers to run backward as that any man who was born a free man should be contented when penned up and denied liberty to go where he pleases. If you tie a horse to a stake, do you expect he will grow fat? If you pen an Indian up on a small plot of earth and compel him to stay there, he will not be contented, nor will he grow and prosper. I have asked some of the great white chiefs where they get their authority to say that the Indian shall stay in one place while he sees white men going where they please. They cannot tell me. I only ask that the government to be, I only ask the government to be treated as all men are treated. If, an I, if I cannot go to my home, let me have a home in some country where my people will not die so fast. I would like to go to the Bitterroot Valley, 
there my people will be healthy. Where they are now, where they are now, they are dying. Three have died since I left my camp to come to Washington. When I think of our condition, my heart is heavy. I see men of my own race treated as outlaws and driven from country to country or shot down like animals. I know that my race must change. We cannot hold our own with the white man as we are. We only ask an even chance to live as other men live. We ask to be recognized as men. We ask that the same law work alike on all men. If an Indian breaks the law, punish him by the law. If a white man breaks the law, punish him also. Let me be a free man, free to travel, free to stop, free to work, free to trade where I choose, free to choose my own teachers, free to follow the religion of my fathers, free to think and talk and act for myself. And I will obey every law or submit to the penalty. Whatever the white man treats the Indian as they treat each other, then we will have no more wars. We shall all be alike, brothers of one father and one mother, with one sky above us and one country around us and one government for all. Then the great spirit chief who rules above will smile upon this land and send rain to wash out the bloody spots made by brothers' hands from the face of the earth. For this time, the Indian race is waiting and praying. I hope that no more groans of wounded men and women will ever go to the ear of the great spirit chief above, and that all people may be one people. And much to Yalalat has spoken for his people, Chief Joseph's Nez Perce name, meaning thunder traveling over the mountains. <laughs>